In this video, I'll be showing you some levitation and spin effects uh, of a permanent magnet uh, at the center of a large vortex wound coil or rodent coil. Uh, you can see I've got the musphere in a little plastic cup the, um, and I've got the uh, input to the coil at about 23 hertz, about 9 volts. Uh, 9 volts seems to be the lower, the lower bound to get it spinning. 12 volts is, seems to be a little more solid, so 12 volts, 23 hertz, it's a good place to start. Then you just, uh, uh, you see me holding the coil at the center. It's sort of floating up out of the cup. Um, so it's essentially being uh, levitated. I just have the cup there to kind of guide it, to keep it in the center. If you remove the cup, you'll see that it goes, tends to hug the uh, outer, uh, or the inner um, diameter of the coil. Um, it'll sort of change positions from time to time as well. And here, there it is from the underside. It's, it remains suspended. You can actually see it sometimes. It'll, it'll start rolling around the underside of the coil in a spiral form. It's very interesting. Um, now, as you increase the um, frequency, um, the ab coil's ability to hold the neosphere um, decreases. So the higher the frequency, uh, the more it starts to begin to fall at around... Um, but and the other thing is the higher you increase the frequency, the faster it begins to spin. Um, also, if you increase the voltage, it intensifies the field. So um, you, you can kind of balance that out. You can keep it held in the, in the center high, with higher frequency and higher voltage. Um, you know, I, I've only been able to, I've only taken it up to, a, you know, about uh, five, six hundred watts because I, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to put too much power through the system. And there's plenty to explore at lower power. Um, I, although I'll get to that. In any case, um, it's interesting too. Uh, while you are uh, while it's while it's levitating like this, it, there's kind of a, a field under underneath and above as well. But underneath the coil, um, that the ball kind of just is, you know, it, it floats in. It's it's kind of being lifted in. It feels weightless in that field. So um, uh, it, it's, it's just very interesting. Um, if when I when I increase the frequency to a point, it just spins faster and faster and faster, and then finally you get to a certain point at around 170 hertz where it just doesn't. It, it, it'll just cease to spin. It's also possible at any point if you just move it, you know, in the wrong position you know, within the, this field of of spiraling flux that it'll uh, it'll just stop spinning. You've got to reset back to 23 hertz and get it going again. So, but in, in any case, I wanted to show you here, you can see how it's kind of just lifting up out of the cup and, and then it's kind of like a feather dropping down, even though it's a 180 gram, you know, neosphere, it's just kind of dropping gently down into the cup. Um, it, it was very sort of interesting and it's very easy to catch it because it's kind of, again, it's kind of like weightless. Um, so I just wanted to, sh to show that as well. Uh, I'm going to keep working with this coil. It's, um, it's very, it's very, it's quite fascinating. Um, there's huge amounts of potential here.